Hello, hello everybody, this is TipTopMTG here today with another Magic the Gathering video. In today's video, we are going to be playing some MTG Arena, and we are going to be playing some standard, playing a Sultai Snow deck. So this deck is all about just gaining value off of playing Snow Permanents. And so, yeah, we have a bunch of really awesome payoffs for that, and we're just gonna play some magic. I mean, this is a magic channel after all, and it's, uh, yeah. So this deck really wants to use Jorn and Caldring as its main, like, engine. That's what I want to do with this deck. We can use, for instance, Caldring to loop Priest of the Haunted Edge as a removal spell. Um, you know, this is a little bit more on the control -y side, as you can see, we're not technically running that many snow lands. Um, but yeah, we have things like Frost Augur, which are going to let us gain some card advantage. Avalanche Caller, which should be a win con, technically. We have some removal with Heartless Act. Um, we have some Mire Tritons, just as I like the Death Touch. We can also mill ourselves to then use the Caldring, so it's a little bit of card advantage, technically. Um, we also then have Priest of the Haunted Edge as some removal um, that can then combo with anything that cares about snow permanence. We have it coming just as some, you know, counter spells. Egon, uh, God of Death, centers a little bit with Mire Trident. I also just kind of wanted to mess around with him, so I threw one in the deck. Uh, Murder's Rider for another removal spell. Glittering Frost for both uh, ramp and to turn our lands into snow lands for the ones that are not that. Uh, we have Jorn, which is really what we want to do with this deck. Aghanim's Awakening, um, just nice as another land or as a spell to bring back stuff. We have Draugr Necromancer, which is going to let us kind of turn this removal into stealing our opponent's creatures. Pelucranos, which is going to care about being in the graveyard and kind of work with that synergy just a little bit more. We have Narfi, which is going to let us return him from the graveyard to the battle field if we mill him with Mire Triton or Throne of Death, and he's also going to boost up our zombie creatures. So yeah, I feel like this is pretty simple. Um, this is kind of what we're trying to play. So why don't we just go jump into some games? Um, so we're going to jump into the ranked queue. Um, I've only played one or two games with this. I won one, lost the other. So we're really going to have to see how this goes. All right. So we're going up against a Tezzeret avatar. We don't really see those very often, I feel like, um, even though he is, I believe, free for everyone. This hand is interesting. The issue is we have Egon, um, but so we've Throne of Death and nothing really to combo with that. We've Draugr Necromancer, but no removal and nothing to ramp into. So I just, there's, these pieces just don't work well together. Big issue here is we don't have any snow lands, but I think I'm going to keep it and we'll just get rid of one of the avalanche callers. Um, I think, honestly, I might go back here and after this game add more Snowlands. Uh, this is a, I lost the first game because I didn't have enough. Um, but, you know, this deck is more... Oh, I guess. Okay, that kind of saves us here. Um, looks like we're going up against Rogue? But they have Luris, which isn't necessarily in a Rogue stack. Um, I think I'm just going to Temple of Deceit. I don't see a reason to rush things onto the board. Um... I don't necessarily think I need this, but if we can get out Caldring, yeah, yeah, because we're not, re I don't really think we need Jorn necessarily due to our lack of snow mana, I think that Caldring will actually be more useful, and then we can use Throne of Death as, I'm dumb, I'm so dumb, <laughs> that was like a real big mistake, uh, I kind of forgot that that did that, that kind of sucks, I had this big plan and everything, huh. You know what, I'm just going to concede. I don't want to play against rogues. <laughs> like, I just don't. Um, like, I'm in bronze because I just haven't played this rank. And I just, rogues is just not fun. Like, he's trying to, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just not going to play against rogues. If it's rogues, I'm just going to concede. Uh, I, I feel like I don't want to play against rogues. And you probably don't want to watch someone play against rogues. So, I feel like that's just better for everyone. Uh, let's jump into this next game. Hopefully... We don't, we're not going up against a rogue deck, and hopefully we have a little bit better of a hand. Yeah, I think we might need to uh, maybe throw in some more snow lands, or maybe some Fabled Passages. Actually, I think that might be the play. That way we can still be mana fixing while also having our snow lands. Um, I think this hand is fine. We have some removal here. We got Jorn uh, and Frostdogger, so. Yep. Okay, Rune Crab. I mean, technically, it might not be rogues. It might just be heavy control, which is not great for us either. Let's see. Okay, you know what? If we can get Cauldring to successfully resolve, the fact that they're milling us might not be awful. I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's going to get milled away anyway. 
I just realized that doesn't tap for blue. Yeah, I don't have the right triumphs for this deck. Um, and so this one doesn't tap for blue. My my mistake. Um, yeah. Well, this seems fun. Uh, let's just Glittering Frost the Indantha Triome. It'll let us ramp a bit. It'll make it a snow land, assuming this doesn't get blown up. I may have wanted to actually put that on Temple of Deceit. Um, now thinking about it, just so that this one's like a huge target right now. Not only does it tap for two, but it technically taps for more colors. Um, there's Narfi. That's exciting. I think we can actually just get him onto the battlefield. Um, oh, we're playing against rogues. All right. I mean, I think it was kind of obvious it was rogues, but like, hmm. Yeah, I just was hoping it was Demir Control instead of Rogues. Which, you know, there's not much difference at this point, but, like, yeah. Alright, let's get down to this next game. What are the odds he's playing Rogues? This hand's not great. <laughs> this hand is better. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna dump the Agademes. We don't have Blue, which I don't love. I think I'm dumping this, which might be the wrong play, but uh, we're looking for blue mana here, um, just because I love the Priest of the Haunted Edge and Caldring interaction. So we're playing against a Yorion deck, so at least it's not... Oh, no. Oh, okay. Um, well, I'll play this. I'll get down a Priest of the Haunted Edge, just so that it can't be countered. Um, I mean, it'll get murdered, but <laughs> it can't be countered. Right now, it just gives something minus one, minus one. Okay. I mean, so far, not looking awful. I don't love the color combination here, but um, while they can't counterspell this, I can't have blue. <laughs> I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just... Yep. I mean, I may have wanted to play Joran there, but... I want Cauldring because honestly, that's like Cauldring is such a good answer to counterspell heavy decks. Uh, just because I try and cast Dragon Necromancer, it gets countered. Well, I just replay him. Although this doesn't look super counterspell heavy. Um, yeah, I might just sack the priest. Do I do that? I can leave this on my turn, right? Yeah. Hmm. Um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna play Draugr Necromancer. We're gonna sacrifice the priest to kill the Clouds Conseer, and then that'll give us access to the Clouds Conseer. That's pretty fun. Yeah, yeah. This is exactly what my deck wants to do. Fun stuff. I mean, it might not be fun for my opponent, but fun stuff like this. Um. So if they get rid of this, I will not be able to cast this anymore. So let's hope they don't. All right. Cool. Um. This will be our blue mana. Unfortunately, it's like a turn late. But I am able to just cast this. Uh, and I just want to get it cast before Draugr Necromancer dies and I won't have access to it anymore. Yeah, he should have done that beforehand. Uh, I wouldn't have been able to cast it. Luckily, he is a snow um, snow permanent. So Caldrin will let me recast him if needed later. Um, but it looks like I don't know if I'm going to be resolving too much more. Let's see. Let's see if we can get him to use a removal on Cloudkin. That's honestly great. Honest, like it, it, it got rid of his creature, got rid of a removal spell, and let's hope he doesn't have a response to this. Yes, that's exciting. We can then play our priest once again, and yeah. So this removal spell will basically keep coming back. Um, so yeah, that's that's a fun little interaction there. Uh, next turn, I think we play the Draugr Necromancer from our graveyard and hopefully draw a land. If we draw a land, we then leave open Heartless Act. Um, we're gonna hope he doesn't have an artifact removal. He could have, like, Raven form. He's removing that. I'm honestly fine. <laughs> like, he's using a card here to get rid of a card that I can... I Like, this card doesn't cost me anything. Like, to, like it cost me mana. So he basically just spent a card and one mana in order to cost me two mana, but no card. Um, simply because I can tap this. Do I return the priest or do I return the necromancer? I think I return the priest. Um, and then I also return Polukronos. Uh, is this going to get countered? No? Really? Okay. 
Uh, and then if Pelucanos dies, we might be able to exile stuff, which is a little bit of a nombo with Caldring, but there's enough, like, non-snow stuff in the deck that I think it's fine. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh! <laughs> heartless Act. Uh, there's Heartless Act's weakness. But sometimes it feels like Heartless Act is just a murder spell. It's just murder, but that's kind of nice. Oh, that's so sad. That is actually really sad. If I had the mana open, I would have actually killed it. Um, let's swing at that. We're going to then bring out Draugr Necromancer once again and leave our mana open for Murderous Rider and Heartless Act. This deck is just so, like, resilient. Like, yeah. Let's see what he does. <sighs> yeah, we're just going to kill this thing. If he wants to return Pelucranos, that's kind of stupid. I'm going to fight. He's going to get down to one counter. He's going to return that to my hand, and then I get to replay it with six counters. Yeah, that wasn't very intelligent. Um, Because, obviously, like, not only did I not have to use the removal spell in my hand. Ooh, I got a priest. Um, But I also now get to play his Baron as removal, get to replay my Pelucranos no longer with three counters, but instead with six. Yeah, I, I don't think that was the wisest choice. And I'm actually going to leave this mana open uh, just for the Heartless Axe. I don't want him doing anything too crazy. Um, yeah. So next turn we swing at him for... I should have just played... Mm, no, that doesn't change anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I just do this and then we swing at him. And then we play like Meyer Triton. And then we just save a bunch of removal. Um, oh, ooh, ooh, what did I mill? What did I mill? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's just it. And then we have removal with Pelucranos, Heartless Act, Heartless Act, Murderous Rider, Priest of the Haunted Edge. So they're going to destroy a non-land permanent. I don't know which. So they're going to destroy that, which is kind of annoying, but it doesn't save them. Um, they do need to, like, flicker that with Yorian in order to save themselves. So, hmm. I mean, they may have another removal spell. Nope. All right, so yeah, that's how the deck kind of wants to run. Let's take a look kind of at the board. The idea here is that we are using Caldring to just kind of loop, um to loop things like Priest of the Haunted Edge or the Stronger Necromancer. And so because right now Standard is so full of controlling decks, it is really awesome to be like, oh yeah, you have all of this removal. Like he had a ton of removal, but it didn't really feel that bad because, oh, you killed my Draugr Necromancer, I recast it from the graveyard. Uh, and then we had our own removal in case he played something. Um, we were also then stealing his removal and using it against him. So just lots of really awesome interaction there. That's kind of how the deck wants to play. It's a little less like I want lots of snow lands and a lot more I'm going to mill myself and recur stuff. Um, but it definitely obviously is caring about snow stuff with Cauldring there. So let's play another game. I was actually worried. I'm like thinking after those first two like awful games, I'm like uh, going against rogues. <laughs> I was like, oh, is this going to like turn into a montage of being a video of me just going up against rogues seven million times? All right. So here we have, I would say a decent hand. I mean, we have the, the we're pretty removal heavy. We don't really have much. I don't, we don't have Jorn. I want Jorn. Hey, there's Jorn. Um, we are going to, we're going to toss a Triumph, which may seem somewhat weird. Why would I want two Jorns? But if you can get both Jorn and Cauldring out, it means that if Jorn dies, you can use Cauldring to get back Jorn. Um, so having two of them is really nice. It also means that, like, if one gets countered, I have the other. Um, and, it, uh, yeah. So I think I think that's fine. And I, I think it's going to work out based on the lands we are drawing. Dang it, I wanted that milled. That would be so much better if it was milled into my graveyard, just because then it's only three mana. This card is honestly just surprisingly good in this deck with the amount of self-mill. See, I'm worried about this card, but I think Heartless Act would be better off somewhere else. Um, like there. Yeah, we cannot let him do that. Um, just because we do care about our graveyard so much with Keldring. Um... However, I am content. I am tempted to play Jorn here instead of Cauldring. But I think we play Cauldring while we have the chance. And then if Jorn gets like counterspelled, if he like plays blue, 
um we can then play that we can also see what he's kind of running um he's he, he totally has a naturalize right or a gem razor gem razor questing beast interesting 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 okay um hmm i think at this point our our really our only option is to play jorn i mean i can continuously chump block oh no because he enters the battlefield tapped hmm i think we block the swarm shambler if he swings with it um and then if he doesn't next turn we hope we shock in agadims nope okay we are just gonna get hit for six hmm this is just a case of aggressive deck beating my slower deck i think um it's just an unfavorable matchup I really need some removal. So it's kind of inconsistent. We got a lot of removal last time and like none this time. Yeah, Frost Augur isn't going to save us here. I mean, I think we're not dead because we can play Frost Augur. Oh no, because it enters the battlefield tapped. Yeah, we're just dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, we are just, I am just going to concede. So yeah, that was just a fact of, you know, uh, we were unable to get our feet going. Like, I think that was round five we lost on. So that's just a little too fast for this deck to handle. I think that's going to do it for this video. I know we only really got one good game in there, but it was a really fun one and kind of showcased what the deck wanted to do. I know you guys uh, often request for me to do these like live gameplay games. And so I thought, you know what, let's try it. See how I like it here. Um, so yeah, I want to know what you guys thought about this video in the comments down below. If you guys enjoyed, um, hit that like button, subscribe. There will also be the deck list for this deck in the description down below. Either way, guys, see you in the next one. Bye.